Hello, my name is Sean Calgill. Uh, welcome back. Today's video is all about going to prison when you're over 50 years old. And um, what the medical's like for people over 50. And uh, a little bit about suicide thoughts. So I did a 52 month sentence. I got out last year at Christmas. I got a couple years of federal probation left to do. I'm doing these videos to help out the white collar guy who has to go to prison and is scared. Uh, I want to tell you I was scared to death going to prison. Um, I want to tell you, you don't have to be scared. If you're a white collar criminal like I was, you're going to go to a camp, you're going to go to a low. Uh, because you're probably out on pretrial, awaiting sentencing, or fighting your case. And if you were locked up in a federal detention center awaiting sentencing, you wouldn't be allowed to watch any videos. Uh, so most white collar guys, most I say, get out on a, on a, on a $50,000 bond or sometimes a $100,000 bond that you basically just sign for. Uh, you don't put up any money because the marshals will come and get you and if they want their money, they will, for the rest of your life, find that money. They will attach, they will, they will get their money. So I was on pretrial for four years. Scared to death. I was going to do 13 years in prison. Then it went down to 11. It went down to seven years. Finally got a 52-month sentence. Uh, there's some programs I took in there, which some of my videos talk about. One was RDAP. I took a year off. I got six months halfway house. I did 27 months in, in uh, the camp at Florence, Colorado, and six months in the halfway house. So my sentence got cut in half as far as the time I did in prison. So a couple things I want to cover today is if you are over 50 years old, will the judge give you any leeway? Does it make a difference? Are there other guys in there that's, I was 53 years old when I went to prison. I want to tell you the judge doesn't care how old you are. If you are 92 years old, <laughs> unless you've got medical problems, uh, and you have to have severe medical problems because they will send you to a medical prison. They're called uh, MMCs, Medical Something Correctional. So they have basically, if you are severely, uh, need severe medical attention all the time in, in nursing home and all that. So they have a, like a nursing home prison. And I hear that they are hell holes. Basically, you go there and you wait to die. The medical system in the prison, in the federal prison system, is really, really bad. You can wait a year, two years, five years for surgeries. Um, and when you do get the surgery, um, you're not going to get any pain medication that you should when after the surgery. They're not going to care. They're going to throw you in a wheelchair. And you still got to go get your own food. And you got to do everything unless you get sent to one of these medical facilities and they're nightmares they're nightmares i haven't been to one but i've heard the horror stories um i was 53 years old and you know i've got high blood pressure and a few little minor kind of things that you get in your 50s and i where i went to prison i saw guys with no legs guys in wheelchairs guys lots of guys with diabetes i saw guys in their 80s Still doing a 10-year sentence. I went to a camp. When you go to a camp, it's 10 years or less. If you have 15 years or less, you go to a low. The camps and the lows are relatively safe. Nobody's going to beat you up. You don't have to join a gang. They don't really have gangs. The gangs that they do have in the camp are the people that have worked their way down from the penitentiary to the medium to the low, and now they're doing their last 10 years at a camp. And a lot of those guys stick together, and there's little cliques of them. We maybe had 40 guys in a camp of 500, and you'd see them gather. They kind of run the TV rooms, and I think that's basically all they really run. Um, I'd see them sitting in their little groups out on the track. They have their little meetings. Um, they don't like us white-collar guys at all. They basically ignore you. They'll only speak to you unless they have something to say. They don't like the fact that we don't have politics, that we don't have to join a gang, that we don't have prison rules. I got the feeling they just they just stayed to themselves and they didn't like us. 
A few of them will talk to you after they got after I've been there a while. Some of the guys would tell me the stories that happened at the pen, happened at the medium, and they hate being at camp. They like those gangs. They like their politics. They like the way prisons run in those places. Thank God I didn't have to go to a medium or a penitentiary. I would not have made it. I would have had to tell them, just lock me in solitaire. Throw me in the hole. Throw me in the shoe for my whole time because I don't want to join a gang. But there's no tattoos on me. I'm not hard. And so I, I did my couple of years in federal prison. And uh, it didn't affect me that way. No, it is prison. And it did, they do take everything away from you. Um, we have no fences, and you can leave anytime you want, but good luck with that. Um, marshals will find you. Um, so I wanted to say that, uh, well, I want to talk about something kind of serious. Suicide. So I was on pretrial for four years, and I thought about suicide. I wanted to kill myself. I thought my life was over. I was already in my 50s. I'm looking at... 11 years in prison, give or take. Um, I finally got a plea deal and like I got the 52 month sentence. But I seriously wanted to kill myself. Now, pretrial made me go to a therapist. I knew better than if you tell the therapist that you want to kill yourself, by law, they have to call somebody and they will come and get you and they will throw you in a suicide ward. I made the mistake of calling a friend Right when I first got indicted, I told him I wanted to kill myself. He called the cops on me. I was at a library. The cops came in. They took me out of the library. They brought me to this suicide ward over in Martinez, California. And uh, they kept me there for a couple of days until I could convince the doctors to let me out that I really didn't want to kill myself. That I just found out I was going to prison. And I just kind of said that to my friend, and they believed me. Uh, I had a girl that I knew who actually came. They had to release me to somebody. Um, once I did get indicted um, and found out I'm really going to prison, I, I had more thoughts than that of suicide. But I, now you can't tell anybody. You can't tell your family. You can't tell your friends. And you definitely can't tell your pre-trial officer. You can't tell your therapist. Because these people are required by law to come and get you. Um, and it's really tough. Today, uh, today I want to live. I want to tell you, if you're having those same thoughts, uh, don't tell anybody because they will lock you up until you get sentenced. They might put you in a straight jacket. They might, you don't know what they're going to do with you. You can't tell anybody. So what do you do? Who can you trust? Because even a good friend of mine turned me into the cops when I said I wanted to commit suicide. So this is tough. You can leave me a comment down below and uh, we can exchange numbers. You can talk to me. I'm not going to tell anybody, but I'm probably not the guy you want to talk to about this. <sighs> Who can you talk to? That's a good question. Uh, I went to uh, a lot of AA meetings because I had a drug and alcohol problem. I did that on pretrial. There's people in there you can trust. Um, I wouldn't call one of those suicide hotlines because they're required to come tell somebody to. It's really tough. The thing is, it's natural. When you find out and you're over 50 or you're 60 or you're 70 and you're going to go to prison for who knows how many years, I think it's just a natural human thought to want to, to, want to end it all. I'm here to tell you, you're going to get through this. You're... If you're watching this video and you're a white collar criminal, I mean, you probably got a 10 year or less sentence. You might have five years is kind of the average for white collar crimes. You might only get one year, two year. If you've been indicted though, chances are you're going to prison. Rarely do I see people get probation, but you can get through this. A camp is like going to high school. Nobody's gonna want you to be their bitch. Uh, like I showed you this picture, here's a bunch of guys that I knew in prison, all well over 50 years old. And as you can see, there's black guys in there. There's white guys. We're all hanging out together. Um, there's no politics. It's not like you see in the movies of these hardcore penitentiary prisons. Okay, um, watch my other videos about my first day in prison. You'll know, find out that a prison camp is really easy. It's actually, there's going to be some fun times. Um, there's going to be sad times. The holidays are rough. 
Um, you're going to be taken away from your family. If you're a rich stockbroker, banker, lawyer, doctor, and you're used to having a big fancy house and car, and maybe you have maid, and maybe you have lots of employees underneath you, and you're used to giving orders and running the shop, shots, and you're the head of the household, all that's going to be stripped from you. You're going to be just like the drug dealer next to you. There's a lot of drug dealers in a federal prison camp. Now, these are the guys that got caught with a big sack full of crystal meth, but they didn't have any guns, they didn't have any violent charges, and they're put in the prison with you. Then you got the guys who have worked their way down from the penitentiary to the medium to the low to the camp, and you got maybe third, maybe a third of the people there are going to be your doctors, your lawyers, your politicians, your bank, your bankers, your stockbrokers, lots of real estate fraud. Um, you're going to have lots of guys like that. Um, and you'll get through this. You'll get through this. It's not hard to do your time in there. And they give you enough. I'm not going to say there's plenty to do, but there's enough. There's We had baseball, volleyball, bocce ball, racquetball, handball, basketball, music rooms. I had a rock band. We have guitars. We had pianos. We had drums. We had lots of classes you could take at night. We had church services. We, we There's all kinds of activities going on. There's lots of things to do. Um, and also they give you a job. And you don't work more than six hours a day. And if you're an old guy, if you're over 65, you don't have to work. Although you may want to. You may get a desk job in the education room or something. You could teach GED classes. to Some of the guys who never got their GED, there's lots of things you could do if you want to pass the time. But there's people in there 60, 70, 80 years old, and they get through it, and they do get out. Um, just use this time to work on yourself, to work on your mind, to work on your body, to work on your mind, and get through this. I just want to tell you, it's going to be all right. Nobody's going to beat you up. You will live through this. I'm going to keep this video short today. But I want to tell you the medical system is the worst system. Um, if you have medical problems... Um, they're going to basically tell you to drink some water and walk the track, and it's going to be all right. I had to have a hernia surgery when I went in. I went in there with a hernia. I had to wait about eight months for that surgery. And then when I did, when you do go to a hospital, they don't handcuff you or anything. They drove me in a car, took me to the surgery, and came back out. But they wouldn't give me any pain medication. I had to get through that. Uh, but I had to wait eight months for a surgery. I know guys that were due to get out, but they were waiting on a surgery for their back or something. And they told them, well, you still got six months left until we're going to give you the surgery and you're supposed to be out next Tuesday. Well, we're going to hold you on a medical hold so you can get your surgery. So you got to keep that in mind. Um, please see a doctor if you can before you surrender to the prison. Try to get all of your medical stuff done ahead of time. You will get through this, and I'm just going to keep this video short. Thank you for watching.